so good evening everyone uh, let's get started my name is ishani i'm going to be your uh, trainer today for doing data visualization using power bi and we are going to continue with the same data set that is website data analysis um, all of you can see my screen right everybody is able to see the screen yes so i'm also going to uh, share this data set with you guys i know you have it but all the trainers might have tweaked the data a little bit so i want to make sure that we are going to work on the same data set so i've sent it in chat if all of you can download that okay and let's get started i hope you guys have uh, power bi already uploaded you guys have downloaded the power bi yes perfect okay so so far you have attended uh, you know boot camp which is uh, related to python and related to sql so based on your interaction with both the trainers understanding this data set and so on and so forth what was the first step that either way whether you started with sql or you started with python you did what was the first thing you guys did what did you do understand the data set correct tanuka absolutely correct first thing we did was we understood what the data set is all about because without understanding the data you might be a master in using a particular tool you may be very good in certain techniques but it won't really work very well because you don't know you're kind of aiming blindly and that's where you need to understand the data properly so let me quickly um, pick up the data set open the data set over here so this is web analytics data set and what we have over here is the visit id visitors id uh, how much time did a person spend what was the age of the person who was there what is the average income uh, what was the internet usage what was the ad topic which country the person belongs to which the gender which time of the day the person has clicked what is the weekday month year and click yes or no right any confusion around what this data set is so think about there is a website on a website when you go to some websites do you see ads in the website any popular website that you go to do you see ads around it have you guys noticed ads on the websites yeah right so this is like a you know if for example we are a training institute in analytics and if there is a, any website or any author who has a great blog on analytics we kind of you know we'll say okay you know why don't you put a ad of iv over there and uh, whoever is your visitor may look at the ad click on it and i get a customer for myself right so think about these ad topics and the ad topics on the website and it varies from the time of the day which ads may be running it may be varying in the size of the top uh, you know the ad so that information is not given to us but we do know at what time of the day which ads were clicked right now you as a, a person who owns that website right how would you put a commercial value to how much you should charge for those ads like if someone comes to my website how do i say okay you know to put up your ad for let's say one month i'll take 1 lakh rupees how do i put a commercial to it how do i know the ad success come on guys you've been doing working with this data since yesterday day before yesterday any thoughts
the views, the click rate, basically, right? You will worry about the click rate. Which ad works better, right? If there are certain ads which I know, can you repeat the question? My question was, let's say I'm picking, if I have someone approaches me, say, I want to put an ad, how do I tell, okay, how much will be the charge of that ad? How will I know the performance of the ad? By the click rate on that ad, right? I would like to make a person also understand that, okay, someone says, okay, one lakh rupees too much to pay for a month, then I can tell, you know, hey, you know, someone with this profile, that is your target profile. This age group is visiting my website and this is a previous click rate with my other customers, right? So that's what we want to find out in Power BI today, that which product or the ad topics are working for me, right? We're going to analyze, we're going to create a dashboard around the click rate of an ad. Sounds good? Just to get you a little excited, hopefully, and uh, wake you up, since some of you seem to be very, uh, you know, not active right now, let's wake you guys up. And I have already went ahead and created a desktop, a Power BI desktop uh, dashboard over here. And what we're going to aim in the time that we have been given to, we are going to create this dashboard that you're going to see now. All right. Looks interesting. So if I click on product 10, I am able to understand 55, whatever the units, units are not given, 55 spent time, average age group is 40, average income of the people coming here is 49. We can see the performance of the click and these click that I've taken is only the yeses. I'm not considering the no's at all, okay? Based on the yes clicks, what has been the click rate, male or female, who is clicking more, which time of the day, is being used, it is being clicked on more. And what are my top 10 countries? There are a lot of countries. And trust me, if I have like data set of 200 countries, it's not easy to visualize those 200 countries. If I give you a graph of 200 countries, where will you put your focus? Do you think you will be able to focus on it properly or is just a, you know, a chart in front of you which has no value addition? There will be no value addition on that chart. And what we can also do in Power BI, this is for product 10. And if I click on females, now what I'm looking at is the data pertaining to females. So I can see, you know, in the countries like China and Cyprus, both the time it was only females who clicked on product 10, right? Or if I wanted to do something like, if I wanted to understand, okay, in evening, which sector is, clicking on it, females are clicking on it more. Um, Senegal and all these countries which are highlighted, these are working more. And January had the higher base, but in June, oh, you're not able to see? What about others? Now are you able to see? All of you are able to see now? All right. So I was just uh, making you excited for no reason. <laughs> when did you, we didn't even see what it is all about. So this is a product that we are going to aim at uh, creating by the end of this workshop. And one of the things that you see on this is that we are having a product number which is like the ad topic and depending on the ad topic that you're picking we are able to understand the average time spent the average age the profile of who's coming what's the average income the trend of the clicks in the various months what are my top 10 countries what day of the day uh what time of the day is working well for me and who is my main so kind of a profile again male or female who's clicking on those ad now interesting to look at or no? Now that you've seen. Okay, now let's get started. And if I remove 
the filters over here, then this is the overall understanding of all the ad topics. Okay. So first thing, what we're going to do, you're going to open your Power BI desktop. I don't see excitement in you guys. You excited to make this or no? I don't know how many of you are aware, but to data visualization has, you know, it's kind of picked up a fast pace since 2015. And right now, I think I get more demand than ever from the client side where people uh, want to create dashboard, train their people on dashboards. There are a lot of companies that I did not even, you know, think about that they would be approaching me for creating data or to manipulate data to create dashboard. But now I have, you know, everywhere, anywhere from a large, you know, a large MNC as a client to very small clients also who have the business I've picked up uh, due to this online thing, work from home thing, the technologies have got a hit. They are accumulating a lot of data and now they want to utilize the data that is there. So we are, you know, this has become in demand, Power BI, W, Click view, all these three are the most sought after data visualization tools that we are working on nowadays. So you go online, any job opening that you see for data science, you will be able to see that, you know, people are asking for Python, people are asking for SQL, and people are asking for one of the data visualization tools. Together, it makes a very good profile for a person because even though, you know, if you think about like you did SQL, there are concepts of SQL databases that get carried on in Power BI, in Tab, in ClickSense that can get carried on in Python. Because nowadays, if you're, you, I'm sure you are aware that it's not that one table is available to us. The tables are many different type of databases are there. So we should be able to work with multiple files, multiple workbooks, multiple databases, and hence the need of understanding of SQL. Okay. So today I've taken only one table. So we'll not be, you know, connecting it back to your SQL workshop. And we will only focus on creating this dashboard over here. So this file is what? It is a CSV file. So I'm going to click on text CSV. Over here at the bottom, we see connect. Once you click on connect, it will allow you to go and pick up the file. So this is my file open. As soon as it does that, this window has opened up. What is this window? Do we need Python knowledge to make dashboard? No, you don't need a Python knowledge to make dashboard. But in a project which may be only Python oriented also, Tanuka, we need visualization. Like visualization is an important step of any project. So we have data. We clean, we prep everything we do for the data. Then the next step is pretty much, you know, uh, visualization of the data. And then we do the prediction part. So that's why I was saying these three tools kind of work hand in hand. And that's the reason we picked up these three tools for our boot camps also. All right. So this is just a preview. This is showing, okay, this is how the data has been picked up. It's a CSV file separated by commas. And I'm not going to click on transform. What happens when you click on transform? Form, you are able to make changes in your data. So right now I won't, but I will make you do a little bit of transformation to make this dashboard. And for now, we are going to click on load. Let me know if everybody is with me. Done. All right. Now let's focus on the main area of Power BI, okay? So Power BI is divided into three main components. One is the front part that open up called the reports. Second is the table, the data. Right when I click on the data, I'm able to see the data over here. And the third part is the models, data models. This is where I was talking to about I am sure Pratik must have touched upon the thing that if there are multiple tables, we create relation 
between the tables and so and so forth. So this is the part where I, if I have multiple sources of data and tables, I can connect the data to each other so that I can create visualization using the information from all the tables, right? Today, our focus area is to work in reports. I'll just quickly take you through this data. So if you see again, this is exactly how we had in Excel and it is showing up over here very nicely in the tables also. Let's go back to reports. Now, when you are in reports, again, three main areas of working. One is filters. We are going to be using this filter area. Remember, I told you I have picked only data related to yes. So how did I do that? Your network is having problem. It's pausing quite often. Is it for everyone that my network seems to be a Everybody is having this issue? Yes. Okay. Uh, let me just once. So what is there in the field part? In the field, you will see the tables that you have. Uh, connection unstable again. Uh, okay, how about now, guys? Apologies for this internet mess. I've got two internet connections for this reason only, so that there's no lag. Um, now, so it's okay. Let me know. So we were talking about this uh, part where fields are, and in field, you will be able to see all the tables. Once you... Video issue is still there. Hmm... Um... Okay, now let's see. So once we click on the table, you will be able to see all the fields that were there in our table, right? Add topics, age, average income, clicked, country name, month, time period, time spent, weekday, year, right? Now you see what is going on. There are certain fields which does not have the summation symbol and there are certain fields which have summation symbol. Can anybody tell me why certain things are appearing with the summation and certain do not have it? What is the difference? How is Power BI treating it? Numbers, very good. Correct. Anything which is numbers, anything which is numerical in nature is integer. It has a summation value in front. With the assumption, these are the fields that can be aggregated. Okay. And things like add topics, which is a text. It's a categorical data. Click this yes or no. It's a categorical data. Country name, categorical data. So these are the ones uh, which are not going to be aggregated. So this is, uh, you know, Power BI's way of telling, okay, these are the things I can aggregate, apply some max average, whatever you want. And these are the ones which I will not be aggregating. All right. Now, this is the part where we pick up the field. Second part to it is a visualization. And in visualization, like you can see, we have a variety of charts already available in built inside Power BI. And what we need to do is, as in when we want to create any kind of visualization, we simply click on the chart type. It creates like a framework for us. And then we go to the fields and we drop the fields in that. All right. And the third type, the third part of it is filters, which we, if we want to apply filters on the entire dashboard, or we want to apply it on a certain visualization, we can do it from this, the third band. Okay. Now let's create the first one. What did I have over here? First, I had created these three squares on the top, rectangles on the top. 
and what are these these are basically called cards you see over here go to your visualization pane you will see something called cards okay so what i want you guys to do is click on the card and you will see one card gets created and just bring it little towards inside and just shrink it a little bit because we are not going to use such a big area okay let me know when you all have at least one card don't make three cards make one card you don't want to you know do a lot of extra labor over here let me know once you're done let me know if everybody has created one card done Shashank done. Okay, what about others? Anshuman done. Sampriti done. Perfect. All right. Now what we are going to do? If you see the first card, what I have dropped over here, I have average time spent. Okay. So we are going to go back and make sure that this is selected. Go to your fields and in fields where you have the average time. you have time right time spent just click on time spent once you do that it has done a summary for you but what it does by default is a sum on it do we want to show the sum do we want to show the sum do you think that is like is it good for business to see okay how much was the total time spent what should we work with do you want to look at the total time spent no what do we want to work with you want to work with the average time okay now if i open the visualization over here and you see the field it says time spent if i click on the drop down it is showing that it has done a sum and from here i can make it as average right plus i don't like this average of time spent i would like to rename this card that i can do it from here rename for this visual and i can say average time spent okay everyone done this much let's do it let's create this card and after that probably i'll ask you to probably if you want to you can pick up some themes like what i did i picked up the theme from online for the colors and i used it over here they are if you go to view and themes you will see a lot of themes are already available so you can pick and choose the theme of your liking A lot of people like dark backgrounds these days, so you can do that. Or, um, the, what I did was I browsed for themes, and I used it. And there are, you know, theme galleries you can customize, and so and so forth. So I did download one of the themes yesterday, which is Dynamic Three Sixty Five Business Central, and that's what I picked. But you don't have to pick the theme with me right now. You can use any of the theme, or you can. just leave it leave it as a white okay let or you can pick it as this blue one all right this is done now once one card is made i am going to copy paste and create the other cards now why i want to copy paste and create the other cards because i want to make sure all the cards are the same size so if you keep on creating cards and cards you will again have to go back and fix the sizes so you can simply copy and paste and then align it copy and paste and align it and when you are aligning you see those red dotted lines that is going to help me to understand it is aligned with the other cards once that is done i'm going to pick each card i'm going to get rid of average time over here what did i have let's see i had put average age and then average income so that's what we are going to do put average age and this is again a sum we want to make it average now you know how to change it so i'm not spending time on changing and over here remove and put the average income right here so far so good everybody is with me you were able to create this free cards 
let's not spend time right now changing each and every name i'm just going to show you few things on one card and that you can apply on other cards as well okay so like average time spent 66.58 or average age as 37.6 i would not want to see the age as 37.26 so what we can do, you can format this particular card. Now, whenever you want to format any card or any kind of visualization in Power BI, you're going to select it. You see in the visualization, the first one is fields, where it shows which field it has dropped in which area. And second part is the formatting. So there are a lot of things in formatting. What we are going to focus on is uh, we are worried about the data label that is there. And uh, you see the unit is at auto. Like over here, instead of showing a longer number, it has put a K for thousand. And you see the size is there and the value of decimal is auto. So I don't want auto, I want it to be zero. As soon as I type in zero over here, you see this has gone down to zero. Average income can still be, let's say one decimal or let's say zero time spent, I want zero. Okay, so this is how you go to format. So anything you want to format, when you selected one particular card, you can format through this part. So you can have change the size, change the location, uh, the category, how do you want to show it, the color, the size of the fonts, everything can be looked over here. Okay, any questions? Any questions? All good, move on. Okay, no questions. All right, let's move on. Now I told you, this is the information that we are getting 67, 37, 56. This is for which kind of profile? People who clicked or people who did not click or both? It's for both, correct. And what did I say when I created this dashboard? Did I create for both or did I only make, I focused only on the people who clicked? Only the people who clicked. So how do I create it such a way that anytime you're creating any visualization, it should only take into consideration the clicked and the yes part. So this is the part where we are going to utilize our filters. So now I'm going to go to filters. So there is, you want to put a filter on this page. This page means anything that you put, any visualization that you put on this page will have the filters that you put over here. Okay. So we go to filters. Uh, guys, can I request you all to mute? I can mute all, I think. Okay. All right, so once I'm over here, what I'm going to put is clicked this part and I'm going to move it to filter on this page. Now, what does click has? Click has 3,619 no's and 3,038 yeses. So which one do I want? I want only the yes part. So once I click over here, yes, you know, the time has changed to 55, 40 and 49. And I think you will see that's exactly what I have over here, 55, 40 and 49. Right, so this is how my numbers are going to match up now. Right, so we can close it. Now onwards, I don't have to worry. Any visualization that I'm putting on this page automatically gears towards the clicked. Next, what we had, we wanted to understand the share of male and females. So I had used a donut chart. Again, I'm going to click somewhere in the white area. This is the donut chart I used. Click over here. Let it create. I'm going to drag it down. And what do I need to drop? What do I need to drop here? Which field do I need to drop? The visualization world is very simple. You drag and drop and you're done. Life has been made very easy. <laughs> so what do you think I should drag and drop? Gender. Absolutely correct. And what else?
I just want to do a count, right? How many males, how many females? So can I can click, click, go on clicked. Correct. I'll drop click. Now clicked has dropped in what details? That's why, you know, it's in coming as sex and clicked, males and females, but I don't want that in details. I want it in values because I want to count over here, right? And as soon as I click on count, see, as soon as I put in values, since it's a text, all it can do is a count for me. So now it is counting. Um, again, I don't want the legends to be there. So I can go to my formatting and I can turn off the legends. And instead of legends, I would really like a data label to be there. And I think if I increase the form, uh, the size a little bit, I'm able to get a better understanding. So it is telling me 55% uh, in the data labels. What all I have, I have got the data value, I've got the percentage, and I would also want the category, category and percentage. Let's go with that. So we know females is 55% and males is 44.87. Okay. I don't want count of clicked by sex. I just want to write based on sex because on the top it says website click analysis. So I just want to tell this is based on sex, based on month, based on time of the day. So how I am going to change? Again, we have to work in the formatting part. And this is my title. So I'm going to click on title. Over here, it shows count of clicked. I'm going to click and this is how you change the titles. How do you decide which chart you have to use? Um, which chart you use is dependent on what you want to show to the end user, right? So basically, if I have male and female, I would like to show what percentage is male and what percentage is female. So when I want to show a proportion, a percentage, a distribution of the data, I would mostly go for a pie chart or a donor chart. If I'm doing comparisons, then I want to use a bar chart or a column chart. If I'm showing trend over a period of time, I would like to go for a line chart. So that's, you will see that is exactly how I picked this thing also. Since this is in terms of months, it's a trend I'm showing. So I want to sort of say, okay, you know, January, February went good. March did not work so well. And then we picked up again, but again, we had a big fall, right? So this is a trend over here. What we're doing is only comparison. So depending on what you want to show to the user, you pick a chart type. Pradeep, does that, does that help? Yeah, okay. So this is done. Now let's create based on the month. How do you want it? Now there's going to be a one slight issue over here when you're going to try and create it. So this is a line chart. So I'm going to go ahead and pick a line chart and drag it down. I'm going to expand it a little bit. Too many windows, one chart window. Hold on. Okay. Now what do I want to drop over here? I would like to drop month. Correct. And I would like to again drop clicked. But do I want clicked in legends again? Do I want clicked in legends? Where should I put it? Where should I put it? Should it be in legends? Do I want a legend saying yes? Only the data that is there is yes. Should I put it in legends? No, where should I put it? Remember what we did in case of the donor chart in the values, correct? So we're going to drag this thing right. and put it in the value. Do you see something odd? Or oh, this is a nice chart that I got. Anything odd about it? Let me see who is able to figure out what is odd in this data set. It's inverse. Uh, inverse has it. Why are you saying it's inverse? Do you see any order? Month is not in order. And if I give something like this, do you think you will do a correct interpretation of the data? Month are not no. in order. 
right oh, this is going to be a big challenge i give it to someone people are going to think it's a trend it's month i'm seeing from january to july because my data was last and but if i look at the axis at the bottom i've done a big blunder it is not sorted okay now unfortunately even if i had sorted it it would not come properly because what it will do it will do based on a to z do we want a to z absolutely not so i will have to transform the data in this case okay i'm going to create a new column and based on that column we will be able to create it correctly so everybody please look at my screen once how i'm doing it we are going to go back to home and this time we are going to enter into something called power query you see the symbol on my screen this is a power query so we are going to click on power query okay and now uh, this is the area where we can do the transformation of the data if you want to change something if you want to add new columns so this is what the power query is and what we're going to do is we are going to create something called add column and a custom column i want to write my own formula and create it i don't want to use some average nothing nothing of the regular functions i want to create my own function so i'm going to go to custom column everybody is in the query part because if you're not you're going to miss out on a lot of things are you guys in query if anybody who is not in query part or needs help to get into the query part everybody is in query guys uh whoever has logged on with galaxy 21 no certificate will be issued to galaxy 21 <laughs> try to put your proper names adarsh adarsh khushbu kiran everybody is in the power query guys shashank shweta saras ji hi i've met you before tanuka ujwal ujwala diksha vismaya uh repeat all right so this is how i went over there watch quickly so this was your screen originally correct in the home you will see this symbol over here which is for power query shashank did you notice now once you click on it it will open another window for you and it will show you the data which you can transform got it this time and we are going to go to add and we are going to go to custom column done okay so when you are going to add in custom column now it's going to ask you the name of the column that you want to create we will create a column called date i don't have a date so if you see in the data i have got month i have got a year but i don't have a date per se but if i create a date column i will be able to arrange it as per how the date order is so we are going to do uh, i am going to make everything as first of the month so i am putting one going to use a symbol called ampersand which is nothing but a symbol used to concatenate or join two things together so putting a, a, a ampersand i'm putting an ampersand once again and i'm going to put to 2020 again as a text now why i have to put it as a text because when power bi is going to try and concatenate it it will not allow me to concatenate if there is something text and something which is number so i have to make sure both of them all of them are number so one i've put in double quotes to make it a text 2020 i've put in double quotes to make it a text month as it is is in text format only okay is this clear what formula i've written and where i've written it both things are important i can copy and let's say put it in the chat for you guys okay once this is done we click okay you see a new column has been created called date for me and but do you think it's in the date format or a text format on the top you see it's a date or a text
It's being read as a text. It's a text. Okay. Anything which is a number, anything which is a date, typically aligns in most of our tools on the right hand side. So if you see year is right side, right? Month is left side. Weekday is left side. If I move on to internet usage, right side. Okay. So that also helps. If I move on to internet usage, right side. Okay, so that also helps you to understand how it is, you know, understanding it. And on the top, it's ABC, so it's not taking it as a text. Now we're going to click over here, go to our ribbon called transform, and we're going to change the data type from whatever it is to date. As soon as I did that, you see the symbol change. Now it is being read as a date and it aligned towards the right side. Let me know once you're done with this step, guys. Repeat. All right. Um, this is how my original data was. So everybody go to add column and custom column. Let me know if you've reached this part. Add column over here and inside that custom column. Vismaya Pradeep, once you're done, write done so that I know when, when to move on. Vismaya, done? Okay. Then put the name as date and write this formula. And once you're done with this, let me know again, saying done. It's 2020, sorry. Yes, thank you. Done? Okay, perfect. Click OK. You will get this date field, but it is a text. So you're going to select it. Go to transform and then data type, make it date. Again, let me know when you guys are done. Done. Perfect. So once you've done this, we've got the date. Now what you guys are going to do is go back to home. This is a query editor, okay? I don't have my reports. I don't have my models, nothing over there. This is just a place where we create new columns, create new things, clean up our data. If I want to remove any rows and columns, this is a place I do it, okay? This is a transformation part. So we are going to go over here and click on close and apply. Close and apply, why? Because we have made changes to our data source. So we want to apply those changes in our actual reports. So close and apply. And we are back to our Power BI main screen. Okay, now what we need to do, I don't need months over here. I've created a new column called date. So I'm going to bring that date. Where is the date? Over here. I'm going to bring the date into the visualization now. Hold on. Okay. So when I drop the date, if you look at the axis, what it is showing me, it is showing me year, quarter, month, day, all. In our visualization, did we have year or quarter or day? Or does it even make sense to put a day or a quarter or a year over here based on the data we have? No. So I'm going to get rid of year. I'm going to get rid of quarter and the day. And now if you see, we've got the right sequence of our months as well. Clear? Anyone facing difficulty? Do let me know, guys. All good, move on then. 
okay so this has been created i've already told you how to format this one you can easily format but if you notice i had make sure that all my visualization like these three cards are equi like same size equi distance all these charts if you pick any of them you will see they're all aligned well plus even their sizes are exactly the same okay now how do you ensure the size is same for example let's go back this is a particular size and how do i know i can go to format and look at it general i can see x and y position i'm not going to mess with that but i can see the width is 484 in this so i can round it off let's say 490 and 275 and when i select this one again i'm going to go to title and do the same thing not title sorry general how much was it 390 and anybody remembers what was it why is it scrolling down so much today 490 and 490 and 275 so again same thing click here So you can basically, you know, match up the size. I have a bad memory, I think. I keep forgetting and I'm going back and forth. 275. Can't remember this number. So normally what it does, it stays in one place. Today is hopping too much. 275. Okay, so you can make sure that, you know, the sizes are also consistent, it is aligned and so on and so forth. Okay, let's do one last visualization and then we move on to the slicer part. Could we have created a column as integer rather than a false date? You, uh, as in the only thing was you know trust me I tried that Arijit that came to my mind so first thing what I did is I converted the months into numbers so for example I said okay if it's January let's say it's one it's a Feb let's say it's two and so and so forth however it didn't look very nice look and feel was not nice and the sorting also was not done very cleanly so that's what then I said okay you know what we are depicting a month now it's not we are saying that it's the first of the month. We are not using date. We are using month for our visualization. So no harm done in saying it is first of the month. A lot of time you will see in the data that no harm is done when you do that. Plus, if I convert it into one, two, three, four, it's from the visualization point of view. My user is busy saying, okay, three is March, four is April. Versus when I write it like this, it's more easy to understand. Can I add multiple lines in the chart? Yes, you can. If you have more than one series, yes, you can. You're talking about these lines, right? The blue line that you're talking about. Right? So, for example, if I put time spent. Where did I put it? Hold on. So, if I select this chart and if I put time spent. So, I have two lines. Right? Pradeep? But over here, it doesn't make sense. Time spent is much, much higher than the number of people. So it's, you know, making my chart look bad. But yes, you can. Okay. Uh, let's create. A, and, you know, now the space is getting a little cramped up. So you want to open up, increase the size of our dashboard. How do we do that? Select any white space. Don't select any of the visualization, but select any white space. And now when you go to formatting, this is the formatting of the page, not of a visualization. So we can go to page size. I think the one I picked up was I picked custom and I actually went ahead and made it, uh, I think 1800 by 900 is what I have over here. Can't remember what pixel size is, but you can, right? And then I had also shifted this. You can select everything together and shift it. So this is a little the nice thing of Power BI that I like. You're able to manipulate it nicely, pick everything, move it around. Okay. And in fact, when you are uh, 
let's say we have said okay these are the two end marks and then i can select all the three and then i can go on the top to the format part and i can also align them horizontally distribute horizontally so these are some nice easy layout features in power bi okay similarly i can make it go over here right select both and i can say okay again horizontally make it aligned got it now let's move on to our bar chart i'm going to pick the clustered bar chart drop it over here again we have to work with the size and everything but i'm not going in that anymore and now what i wanted was the time of the day time period and again i'm going to put clicked but i'm going to want the click to be in value simple we've got our chart right and similarly then i use the clustered column chart for the countries so what i want now i want the name of the country i want clicked clicked again i want to put in the values and i've got my chart but these are too many countries you see i've got a scroller at the bottom do you think it will be easy for a person to keep on scrolling left and right and see the data scrollers always need to be avoided on dashboard because whatever person sees in one shot is what he understands if you make him go you know left right you're just banking on his intelligence too much to explore the a dashboard himself but typically our users are not like that what you see in front is what you absorb and what you are going to make insights from right so what i did i went back to filters and in this time i only selected this particular visualization okay and over here where you see all country names if you click down this is a basic filtering but what i did i have done top end filtering Okay, once you click on top n, I have picked top. Like you can pick five or ten, whichever you want. Let's say we pick top five, and top five based on what? Top five based on clicks. And what I want to do first is what is doing top five based on the name, yes or no? But I don't want that. I want based on the count. Okay, is this part clear? What I've done? I selected this visualization. I said country name. I don't want all. i want top n and how many top 5 based on count of clicks and apply the filter you see it changed is this part clear guys we almost there last two things we want to put a slicer in the title that's it all right So once this is done, now let's put the slicer. Does anybody know what's the role of a slicer? If you are an Excel user, you might know what a slicer is. What does the slicer do? This is a slicer. If you see over here, this guy over here, these are the slicers. Okay, what it does, it helps me to drill in the data. Now you, it's the you know understand this thing that it's not the dashboards or something new to our world. It's not that dashboards have been there. So before we got all these fancy tools, Power BI, Tableau, we used to do it on Excel. But to for me to get this kind of product with the interactivity would take a combination of Excel and VBA coding. and lot of coding 3 4 hours of work to get to this now please remember we are talking you are learning for the first time and still you will be able to create this dashboard with the same interactivity and you're talking about minutes you're not even touching 60 complete minutes to completely uh, you know do this thing and you're a first time user so that is the power of these particular tools now so the fun part of dashboard in these tools is that i can drill into the data and until as i don't drill down into the data i will not able to explore or find what is interesting what are the insights what happened what did not happen i will not be able to understand those things so when we do this exploration of the data which is under descriptive analytics we do exploratory analysis 
we like to just drill down the data drill keep on seeing different choices and say okay what is working what is not working and come up with our insights or come up with our recommendations for the business so that is the end part of the dashboard the dashboard does not end by making this pretty looking thing and you know giving it to someone else to play around as an analyst you create a dashboard as per the stakeholders need and at the same time give your recommendations or give your insights based on what you found out all right and what we can do over here how do i create the slicer let's go back it is going to be in the visualization you see the symbol this is a slicer so once you click on it it's created over here we can move it move it up make it a little slimmer and longer because there are a lot of products and then what do i need to drop over here we are going to go to the fields and i had dropped add topic as soon as i do that it has come up again changing the size and everything it's going to come as a part of formatting but by default now what is going to happen if i click on any one of the ad products it is going to change and tell me story of that particular ad topic if i want to see of all i can hit the clear button over here and this is for all of them are you guys able to make the slicer can you do it quickly Let me know guys when you're done. I'm just playing around with some themes. I don't know if you guys noticed, but it seems females are dominating this a lot. Very close call. All right. done 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 i can see few messages of done now what is left just a last part of it which is our title okay so how do you put a title you go to insert on this site you will see this text box so your title is through a text box so once you click over here see it has created this text box again obviously i don't want this long thing i'm going to make it shorter too many windows for me <laughs> oh where did it go okay here it is okay i'm going to try and move it up manually i should have given some space on the top also i think i did not give in enough space so one second uh this guy is still here I'm just typing in something so i know where my text box is and i'm going to shift these guys a little bit down to get some space for my title okay now let's go back this is the only not too cool part of these dashboards this thing takes a lot of time this is the only part i don't like
Oh man. Manually move up, move up. Come on. Today doesn't want to move. Come on. If you can shift yours, shift yours. Mine is a stubborn thing today. Doesn't want to move. So I'm just going to try and move it with the X and Y positions over here. X is fine. The Y position I want, let's say 100. Moved up. Let's make it 50. Moved up. 40. All right. And the width I need to increase to, let's say, 600. All right. I can go about 1,200. All right, perfect. Let me move the X position also to 300. Better. I think I can deal with this. Now it can move on its own. Wow. All right. So then you can change this thing. You can change the size. You know, obviously the title needs to be a little bigger. And work on the alignment and everything. And I'm going to put a website. Click analysis and there you go select the data let's increase the font size to 24 we can go a little bit more let's go 28 okay align it in the middle we can make it bold and what else if you want to change the color you can but i would think over here it might look nice and we are done and it's 804, not bad, huh? Well in time. Did a lot of things. I don't know if you realize or not. We worked in the transformation part. Ad campaign might be related to female product. Maybe that's one of the inferences we can get. Or if we study the data further, because we don't have the proper data dictionary to say what was product one, product 10, it might be, you know, yes, that might be one assumption that we can make. Okay. How do you feel? You have done, let me tell you what all. You worked in the reports. In reports, you work with the visualizations and you worked with the filtering part on the page on a particular visualization. You created one, two, three, four, five, six type of visualizations over here. You worked on the query part, created a column for yourself, right? You create slices and created a whole lot of interactivity over here. So heard about DAX in Power BI. What is that? So DAX is basically the set of functions we use to do calculations. So for example, if I wanted to find out what is the percentage of yes and clicks and no clicks, yes and no in the click of a particular product. So over there, I need to further do some calculations on the column of click. I would want to find out the count of click yes, where the click is yes, divided by the count of where the click is no. So whenever we are doing further calculations to find something more in the data rather than just dragging and dropping what you already is there, what is obviously, so we create new fields and that's what DAX is all about. What is the difference between Tableau and Power BI? Um, I worked a lot on Tableau and now I'm working a lot on Power BI because it seems, you know, there's been a shift in the industry that I can clearly see. There's not much difference in the sense it does both do the same thing, but both of them have their advantages and disadvantages. Um, Power BI, I don't find it very intuitive. You really have to focus and remember where to go, what to do, where to click, where why will I find what. Whereas I think uh, Tableau has made it a little intuitive and on their platform. If you're an Excel user, you'll find Tableau very easy to work with. However, the data transformation part, which happens in Power Query, is very powerful versus what I have to do in Tableau. So like I said, it's got its own <laughs> uh, power, pros and cons, but both the communities, whether you talk about Power BI or Tableau, are very strong international community where you will not believe how much interaction is happening between people all over the world. I'm connecting to people, some are sitting in Europe, certain some are in India, some are sitting in the US and you know, it's a very healthy discussion, sharing of ideas that happen. So very interesting 
uh, you know, community is there for visualization. And this is one of one of the fastest growing field that I have seen. All right. I hope you enjoyed the session. Something that you took away from the session and did not just invest your 60 minutes hearing. I would have loved if you guys really, really did your hands on along with me. I feel when you listen to tools about tools, uh, <laughs> I don't think it's very impactful till you get your hands dirty with the data. And the more you get your hands dirty with the data, the better you will become. Okay. Best resource to learn Power BI. Uh, come to IV. Why not IV? We will make you learn in a very structured manner uh, all the tools that you want to learn and a lot of, you know, exercises, a lot of assignments. We make sure that you have enough projects before you exit our program. My LinkedIn profile, absolutely. I had kept it ready. Let's see where it is. Okay, this is YouTube. All right. So this is me. If you, how do I put my LinkedIn profile? Uh, copy link. Let's see. Right. Okay. Definitely get connected. You know, a lot of people um, who are a part of my network are in data analytics, in careers. Some of them are trainers. Some of them are just people who are really, really passionate about data. Some of them are recruiters. So all mixed bag you will find in my profile over here. All right. Always interesting to interact with young folks who are getting into analytics. I know I did not tell you about my story uh, because I wanted to make sure we are creating the dashboard today. But I'm a civil engineer that you will read on my profile as well. I did my uh, bachelor's from India and then I worked in India for about one and a half year. Then I went to US for my higher studies, did my master's again in civil engineering. Worked over there on more than 200 projects of civil and got my PE license, which is professional engineering license over there, which gives you right to do independent consultancy. And then I moved to India, got married here. Unfortunately, moved to a city where not much was happening in the field that I'd specialized. And that's the time I had to change my career. So six years of my studies, about six to seven years of my work experience, total 12 years, I had to see how do I and where do I put my energy and my education and my experience so that it's fruitful. And then I found analytics to be exciting. Number one, I have always worked with data. I've always been a programmer, even though I'm in civil. And I always have passion towards data, mathematics, always, you know, fun to work with. And this was an interesting field to get in that time. 2008, it was not much. Now it has become a very big industry. But even back then, it was fun to be in the data field. So that's how I shifted. That's my passion towards this field. All right. So do connect with me on LinkedIn. And uh, any questions that you have related to your career, related to how you should proceed and things like that, I would be happy to help. I hope you enjoyed all the three days of this boot camp and you took away something with you, something interesting, right? And uh, I'll see you guys then. Take care, guys. Any questions you have, you can definitely connect on LinkedIn and ask. You have a good night. Thank you so much for your time. You have a great week ahead. Bye-bye. Yes, we'll do that.